Hello my soccer universe, Qatar repeat as Asian Cup champions, this time maybe didn't come as much of a surprise but it's still uh, ahead of the tournament, no one would have really thought that the Qataris, especially on the heels of their rather poor showing at the World Cup, that they could repeat as champions, but here they are, and they're the first repeat champions since Japan did so in 2004, also at the time this was the first and second championship for Japan so maybe all the investment in Qatari soccer paid off and maybe there is a real dynasty growing for the future it has to be seen but I also have to give before we talk about the game huge credit to Jordan who actually showed in the final that they are worthy participants in it and they are definitely uh, the surprise of the, of the tournament it's probably the best story of the tournament especially considering they finished only third place in their group yes third place crazy 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 stuff and they're making it all all the way to the final and even were within a shot or so of actually winning that one so it was in the cards to have one of the biggest upsets in asian cup history i don't want to say the biggest one because you know in 2007 we had iraq winning it out of nowhere so this should not be forgotten as well I also realized this is the first Asian Cup final that I watched live. That blew my mind. I mean, I am such a maniac when it comes to watching games. But I realized I've never watched the Asian Cup actually live up until this year. I have frequently watched highlights once they became available on YouTube, but most of the time it was just hearsay. Interesting. Definitely interesting, but I gotta say, and we'll do a little bit of a roundup after I talk about the final. Um, from what I saw, this was way more entertaining than I anticipated. I mean, uh, from before, I, I remember 2015 when I was following it closely, everything went uh, as you would expect it. This time around, you could say uh, the level of comp competition across the board has been raised. Even I want to go so far that it's almost justified to have a 2014 tournament, although I still think that a 16 tournament probably would have been uh, better and more competitive. But let's talk about the final, the big showcase event uh, played in the Lusail Stadium, as was the World Cup final. Um, originally, it was actually not planned to be the Lusail Stadium, but you know, it was sold off very much uh, full. I kind of quipped the last time around that will it be full? <laughs> That was a stupid com comment. I mean, uh, Jordan got wild support from everyone and, you know, Qatar is playing at home. Of course, this stadium will be full. I think it was mostly Qataris as well. Uh, the game itself, I have to say, the first half was a kind of a blur uh, thing. There was not, uh, I think, Jordan, um, although they said they want to be very aggressive, um, had a little bit, you know, were overtaken by the occasion in a way. And Qatar wanted to be careful, and it was only Akram Afif, uh, the player of the tournament. I mean, at the moment I saw him in the opener, I knew that he, he's a pretty good player. Uh, and I already had him in mind. I mean, he also sticks out uh, thanks to his locks, uh, which, you know, makes him also a little bit sympathetic to me. I mean, we're kind of buddies in that. In, in that sense, also he carries his a little bit wilder than I do mine. And it was Akram Afif who actually gets the first, draws the fur, first blood. I mean, he's brought, brought down a penalty box. It was not much of a touch, but I can imagine it was enough uh, that it can be given. And also, when you saw the referee giving it the penalty immediately, there was no way it's gonna, gonna be turned. And he steps up, and while the goal is in the right corner, he converts. That was a whole lot of nothing. Uh, there was also an injury uh, delay, I think Akram Afif himself, I mean it seems like that he has to come, come off, but yeah, uh, that was the first half, a little bit more for Qatar, but not very much to be honest. I also have to mention Akram's uh, Afif's uh, goal cell celebration by pulling out his card from the, um, the shin guard and then flipping the S to make him a superman. Not sure about all the may made about, but it clearly turned a few heads, I would say. Second half, and uh, honestly, it became that Qatar said, oh, we have to lead, we don't need, need to do much, and Jordan will come. And boy, did Jordan come. 
they created so many chances, especially around the R, R, R mark. When you know, uh, when he brought uh, on Alarab uh, 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 and two other players, it was really it became a total onslaught for uh, there. There was, of course, um, Yazan. I think the bicycle kick there that may was the first uh, chance where you have to see it two ways. Yes, if he hits it and it goes into net, goal of the tournament. We don't need to say about it. But there were two other players free that if he has a little bit more um, vision, you could play to those, or those guys, they might be in a better position to score the goal. The, but then on the other side, one has, has to also, also say that he uh, had the right idea when, when the ball was cleared, I think towards the post even, that he back it then he uh, tour to his goal, which uh, missed the mark. It was all, all the long shot. I mean, it was a real barrage. And, and, and he thought that Qatar had just weathered the storm when Yazan himself makes it 1-1 one, one after they gained the ball high up the field. And at that point, I really thought this game could tip. And then one moment where you're not on top of yourself. Um, Ali Almois, I have to say, formal Ali goes in, 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 in the box. It's a tackle. That was not necessary because he was taken, but it's enough of a tackle that the penalty is given. I found personally that penalty to be soft, but I could definitely see, or, or was he pulled or, or pushed something? It was not much. It was not much, and I would even doubt it, even, even if it, this would not have happened. I don't think he would have made the ball. So in that sense, I found it a rather a weird penalty. However, you know, once you call and you see it and there's all the evidence there, blah, 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 of course. Penalty, a thief scores his second one. And then to top it off at that moment, Jordan tried, but you could feel the spirit is broken and then they get another penalty. Uh, <laughs> Qatar, that is, a thief scores a penalty. Hat trick. That's also something I haven't seen in a long time. And every time the celebration with the card. So Qatar, or Qatar, I should say, repeat as champions. In the home tournament, maybe not totally unexpected, as I said before. However, there were bigger favorites out there. Uh, but yeah, they performed the best and definitely took also advantage of having a relatively soft run to the final as well. I mean, Uzbekistan, that was tight. Uh, Iran, that was tight. But this is a moment where you actually think that it should be tight or, or already. But starting from the group stage and so on, it's rather cushy for uh, Qatar in many ways. I don't want to say this was, as a host, you should get it a little, a little bit cushy, uh, but it definitely helped that the big boys were knocking themselves out beforehand as well. But you know, congratulations, Qatar. From a really, really small soccer nation, you're not big time. I mean, two times Asian champions, that's big time. That's as many as South Korea has, also South Korea has many more semifinals and final appearances, but that's a whole different story. Uh, which leads me now over, I would say let's grade the teams and you know I have my own rating, uh, you see the rating here, uh, basically the percentage of uh, how likely is that you would have gotten a worse result, that's the under part, how likely is that that you would have gotten a better result, that's the over part, and then from that I derive a, an index basically under minus over uh, and uh, uh, scale it between zero and 100 because the index itself is between uh, 100 and negative 100 and you see Jordan is the best performing team just outperforming slightly Qatar because Qatar is already an established nation in Asia whereas Jordan absolutely not I mean they have never beaten South Korea before the tournament however they've beaten Qatar in the run run, run up to the tournament as well uh, rounded out is of course by two other big surprises Tajikistan I mean, all the way to the quarterfinal on their maiden journey and Indonesia also surviving the group stage which was not expected at all uh, South Korea and Iran yes if you reach the semi-final you are bound to go higher but you know it's a B grade one can lose in a, in, in a semi-final, but especially when I look at South Korea, how they lost, that's a whole different story. Uh, Syria, Bahrain, Uzbekistan, Palestine is basically on par, and everyone else is kind of a little bit underperforming, if you think about it. I'm looking especially at Iraq, who looked like they could make a run to the semis, and then were beaten by Jordan. Uh, the UAE... That was a bad, bad uh, performance. Australia always would have had it tough, uh, but the India, Saudi Arabia, clearly disappointing result for them. Of course, you know, 
didn't necessarily expect to play against South Korea in the round, the round of skins also they have an excuse, but I think another one is Japan. That has to be considered a major uh, disappointment. They were the overwhelming favorites to win this tournament. Overall, I have to say, and I said it already before, I think it was a really enjoyable tournament to watch. I was actually surprised uh, how many great games there were in there. Um, I didn't necessarily like the long stoppage times, but they made for all the drama that ensued and you know, South Korea uh, greatly benefited from that. Because let's face it, if South Korea wouldn't have had stoppage time, they might not even have survived the group stage. So uh, there you go. Um, that was maybe for me the downside, uh, but I have to say the, uh, most of the games that I saw, and I would say especially in the in, in, in knockout stage, the games that, that I saw were often of better quality than I, 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 I saw the Cotiva could be, that the weather in Qatar definitely at this time of year is a much more amenable one to playing uh, soccer than it is in the heat of the Cotiva, and especially the humidity. But still, it was very, very no noticeable um, and also support. I mean, yes, I understand it's not a tournament like the Euros where you play in countries that have rich soccer culture and where uh, people want to travel and Asia is a much bigger, um, you know, A, the discrepancy in wealth, but also uh, the distances are rather big and then accommodation is also not a small uh, thing. So uh, this all plays a fair factor. The stadiums were not always full. And you know, those were World Cup stadiums. They were probably a little bit oversized for the tournament. But uh, certain teams really got good support. And as I said, it was a fun tournament to watch. Let me know what you thought about the Asian Cup. How did you like the final? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you soon about more in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!